Welcome to Focus on Women Lift Health Global Conference on CNBC Africa. This congregation brings together a diverse group of inspirational women and men in global health to advance women's leadership in shaping health outcomes and promoting gender equality on the planet. The conference will take place in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania from the 6th to the 8th of April. And today we are delighted to have a conversation with Liz Tonjira, the communications, the global communications and engagement director of Women Lift Health Conference to provide us with insights into what we can expect during this conference the upcoming week. Welcome, Liz. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Ratika. Absolutely. Let's begin with what is there to expect from this year's Women Lift Health Conference? What is the defining theme? Who is attending? Great. So thank you so much for having me. Um, this year, we are having the conference under the theme of reimagining leadership, new approaches to new challenges, and we're bringing together partners, collaborators, and allies to discuss pertinent issues that are impacting and have um, tremendous impacts in the, in the global health um, landscape and ecosystem. Mm -hmm. This will be our first in-person convening since COVID, and we have an exciting group of speakers from around the world and an audience of both established and emerging leaders across the global health space. We already have over 800 confirmed delegates from over 40 countries convening here in Dar es Salaam. So we're pretty excited about this. We're also looking forward to a mix of interactive formats over the three days, um, including plenary discussions, skill building workshops, parallel sessions, and definitely one of the things that we keep saying is our unique value proposition is a mentorship, uh, hands-on mentorship opportunities and skill building um, workshops that will be offered on day three of our conference. Um, on top of the main theme, some of the things that we'll be exploring include things like redefining leadership, allyship, institutional policies that have demonstrated success, mm -hmm. um, spotlights on major issues, health issues, including SRHR, mm -hmm. the nexus of climate change, gender and health, and so much more. Mm -hmm. um, we're really excited about this. You know, some of the exciting plenary sessions um, that we have include a first side session um, chat between Helen Clark, the former prime minister of New Zealand, and Dr. Jakaya Kikwete, the former president of Tanzania that will focus on collective action um, for gender equity and equality. And this conversation will definitely outline the urgency of centering gender equality in the world's response to emerging health threats that we've mm -hmm. seen um, post-COVID and other issues that keep um, cropping up. Yeah. And we hope that this will draw on rich experiences and insights that will incite collective action to finally elevate women leaders for the benefit of all humanity. Of course, there are so many other plenaries oh. happening and also parallel sessions that will be happening during the conference. So Liz, now that is a tremendous number, 800 attendees and all those interesting, inspiring, incredible names uh, of delegation that you've mentioned here. And the fact that you interestingly mentioned COVID. Now we've seen the last five years to be quite difficult, whether it is the health crisis that the world has experienced after COVID or the economic crisis or the climate crisis that is ongoing. Give us a little bit in the context of that. What does this conference bring, especially with these three, the triple three, uh, the triple threat? Yeah, the triple threat, definitely something that has been in the minds of very many global health leaders. Um, you know, one of the things that this conference is recognizing is the necessity of inclusive leadership for a robust global health system. We often say at Women Lift Health, when women lead, better health follows. And surely um, this is something that we're going to action post the conference as well. We really want to foster honest conversations, actionable insights, and empower today's health leaders to share power with women from diverse backgrounds. Uh, we've seen when women are left out, there are quite a number of things that are not brought to the table, especially when we're talking about the triple threat. We've seen the impacts of climate change um, severely affecting women and girls, mm -hmm. and we've seen them not always brought onto the table. Um, we, we hope that this event, um, and we plan to engage a broad and diverse audience to amplify new voices as well. Um, oftentimes we forget that there are new voices coming up um, to facilitate context-specific discussions while maintaining a global sense of community, learning, and passion. 
Now, we also want to, like you're saying, just on the context of um, the triple threat, um, health cannot be viewed as a silo. So we want mm -hmm. um, to convene a diverse and multidisciplinary array of inspiring women and male allies who are really critical to these conversations. And, you know, we want to address this multifaceted challenges impeding women's progress in leadership roles. Um, we also want to, you know, talk about how how does each um, industry um, impact um, health? For instance, um, talking about the public sector, talking about the private sector, academia, the civil society, the multilateral organization, the philanthropies, the arts and the media, how does all the, all these indus industries, how do they fit into the puzzle? Right. So for us, this conference is serves more than just an event. It's a dynamic space for building robust networks, connecting with leaders and key opinion shapers from different countries, different communities, different regions and sectors, honing leadership skills, fostering mentorship, coaching and training opportunities to inspire everyone that does come for this conference. Um, so those are some of the key action points that we hope, hope to emerge post the conference. Right, absolutely right, Liz. This is a very multilateral effort. And when you mention context, we can't forget that this is happening in Africa. And so how do you look at the contribution, which is large, immense, of women in workforce in Africa? And how do you work, how do you incorporate that into your conference this time with modern day Africa, with its modern day problems? Um, I think, you know, global health conferences serve as crucial platforms for exchange of knowledge, decision making processes and fostering personal and professional growth among delegates or participants who come for these conferences. Um, despite the anticipation of candid conversations and discussions, evidence that is also presented from research studies that have been done or analysis that have been done, um, in these conferences, there are also major commitments and opportunities to enhance global um, this global knowledge exchange that we're talking about. Unfortunately, evidence continues to show us that global health conferences are mostly held in the global north, mm. where the majority of the global health institutions are headquartered. And, and ironically, you know, with the goal of addressing critical health gaps that are eminent in the global south. So you see the, the irony there. Um, you know, there is evidence that shows 85% of global health institutions are headquartered in the global north. And while I believe over time there's been increased efforts to ensure diversity, inclusion, um, and conference, what I like to call conference equity, we still have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. um, I think more importantly, bringing these conversations closer home to the community level where most of these impacts are felt mm -hmm. um, and providing a platform for people to share voice with both the established leaders and the emerging leaders, there's a lot to learn from each other. There's a lot of knowledge ex exchange um, um, that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, conference inequity um, is a pervasive issue in global health um, that has been marked by limited attendance from low and middle income countries, primarily due to the systemic barriers like exorbitant travel costs, string stringent visa restrictions, um, so we tried our best to make sure that this was very inclusive, very diverse, very accessible, um, having conversations that really resonate with the populations that we serve. And it doesn't help that the COVID-19 pandemic exacerbated these inequities, you know, rendering global travel landscape even more uneven and challenging for those already facing the barriers to participation. Um, for me and where I see it and having org be organized quite a number of this type of global convenings, um, representation is not only geographical, but there's also very few speaking opportunities allocated to community members from low middle and low middle income countries during global gatherings. Mm -hmm. And this also limits opportunities to achieve active, meaningful and objective participation. So this is something that we've been very intentional on. 
And one of the things that, you know, we keep pushing as an organization is to be more inclusive, more equitable and responsive to the needs and realities of the global south and especially those coming from the low middle income countries. And you will see that from the pool of speakers that we have. Um, this is a topic that I can go on and on if you want me to chime in with more details on this. Well, we would I'm definitely, to... Liz, we would love to, you know, like we discussed earlier, this, these are very important topics, especially gender equity, inclusivity, yeah. and the diversity yeah. of voices that are required to put on any of these global conferences platforms. Uh, and something that Women Lift Health Conference is hoping and aiming to do this time in Dar es Salaam. I would like your closing comment, a short one this time, Liz, uh, before we can close this focus on. This will be very pertinent discussions that will be happening. And more importantly, people coming out with some, gaining some tangible tools um, and resources to um, a number of diverse um, workshops. Um, I think one of my, our call to action, especially for the global health ecosystem, is increasing the number and frequency of global health conferences held in Global South, ensuring that they are accessible, affordable, and culturally appro appropriate for the local participants. Um, I think also providing more funding and sponsorship opportunities for the Global South participants, especially mm -hmm. the young and emerging leaders to attend um, this kind of global health conferences um, held in Global North and facilitating with their visa and their travel um, in terms of logistics is quite helpful. I'm very thankful to our funding partners that have made this possible. Um, we have been able to sponsor about 100 students from the East African community to be able to attend this conference. So that has really helped to ensure that the conversations are in inclusive. They are bringing in everybody to the table right. to have um, some action points from the conference. That's excellent. Finally, enhancing the diversity and representation of the Global South participants in planning, organizing, and delivering health global conferences is really critical. Well, Liz, we at CNBC Africa absolutely stand for the inclusion of the Global South. We represent Sub-Saharan Africa and try to bring as much information as we can to our audience, including Women Lift health global conference congratulations on holding it in dar es salaam at this point we would like to close this conversations but before that decades of research have consistently demonstrated the pivotal role women leaders play in boosting productivity nurturing collaboration igniting organizational commitment and advancing fairness within institutions these values serve as the foundation for the women lift health conference as well set to take place in Dar es Salaam next week. This event will focus on addressing critical health issues of our time, highlighted here on Focus on Women Lift Health Conference on CNBC Africa. Thank you for watching.